Well, good morning, guys. It's still a bit dark for the camera. Oop, and I got a fish that fast and ran up under something. I was just trying to check this bed to see if there was bluegill or shellcrackers in it, and it's got a, a big bull bluegill right there. And I just got here. It's dark. That was the first throw in there. Okay, that first bed I started out on this morning had a couple of fish, but not many. I just located another one that's got a ton of fish in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to creep in here and set my cameras up. I'm going to run the fish out, and I'm going to just chill off to the side until the fish start coming back. But this bed is loaded down. I couldn't tell if they're shellcrackers or bluegill, but I'll show you how I do my setup. I've got my GoPro sitting on this metal tripod and this is waterproof so I just sink it down into the middle of the bed to get the shot so let me just show you I'm fixing to inch up into this bed real slow with a boat paddle I'm trying not to disturb the mud or anything okay welcome to the inside of a bluegill bed if you'll notice this bluegill in the bottom right it's going to invert itself and fan down and what he's doing he's trying to remove the muck out of the bottom of this bed and then he's going to kind of swim in circles and broadcast that debris that came up out of the bed and he's trying to make a suitable place for a female to come and lay the eggs so this is the first couple of days of the spawn this is why it usually looks so cloudy is because they're really just trying to build the bed and you'll notice that they're they're trying to build a bed and they're trying to protect their spot, claim their spot. And so a lot of times in the first couple of days, you can drop a worm right in their face and they're not even concerned with it. Like a lot of times if they do grab it, it's really just to kill it or get it out of their bed. Where a shellcracker would have eaten it, the bluegill are just trying to guard the bed. If you're going to fish for bluegill, you're much better off with a cricket. Because as you'll see right here, as I drop this nightcrawler in there, this bluegill grabs it, but he's really just trying to kill it to get away from the bed. He's just protecting his bed at this point. There is no feeding action going on right here. But if I had crickets, I probably would have been, a, would have been able to catch a bunch more of these guys. Now, if you're fishing for them with a nightcrawler and you notice that your line doesn't move, this is what's happening. A lot of times they just gulp it up and they're just sitting there trying to get it down. Because it's such a big worm, your line's not moving. You don't really know you have a bite. And this little shellcracker, as soon as he swims off, I know I've got him and then I can set the hook. But I didn't know that I had one up until this point. And now what I'm going to show you now is if you just look at this image, it doesn't look like there's a lot going on in this bed. But as I speed up the frame rate, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speed this up 500% so you can kind of see everything that's going on in there over the course of about 7-8 minutes. There is a tremendous amount of bluegill traffic. And there's bass that will come through here too and small shell crackers and the like. And there's really just a lot of activity going on. And so you can really sit here and throw a night crawler or a cricket in there repeatedly time and time again and just constantly pull out fish this is why it's really easy to get your limit at this particular lake the limit is 20 and you can imagine in this bed it would not take you very long to get a limit of 20. shellcracker on the other hand have a much different spawning pattern you can notice these guys are super chill they're not doing anything they're not building a bed they spawn in the same area as the bluegill, but they don't use beds. If, they, if you do see them in the little round circle beds, they're just repurposing a bed that was made by a bluegill. I have never seen, up to this point, I've never seen a shellcracker build a bed. They just kind of take over a particular area. And because they're spawning in such close proximity to bluegill, you end up with fish that look like this beautiful fish right here. Now this fish you can see is forming a bed like a traditional bluegill, but if you notice the color pattern looks a little funny, it's because this one is a hybrid between a shellcracker and a bluegill. And again, this just happens because they spawn in the same area. So all it takes is a few bluegill eggs to trickle over into a 
shellcracker spawning bed and there you go and you get a fish that looks like this Fish anyway. Big nice. That is a bluegill hybrid. I've only caught a couple of these in my life. I want to show this fish to you. Let me get the hook out of him real quick. I don't want to hurt him. This fish is really cool. So let me show you this fish, guys. This is a bluegill showcracker or red ear sunfish hybrid. If I had a couple of the, if I had a bluegill and a shellcracker to sit up here to show you, you could see the difference. But this is bluegill coloration on the bottom. This orange is obviously an identifier of a shellcracker. And it's a big fish. But let me put it back in the water so it can go spawn. There he goes, he got it. He got that one. It's a pretty good bluegill here. Yeah, it is. They have them in here a lot bigger than that, but he'll do. catch another one all right guys so here's what I've learned today and that is that bluegill once you've spooked them a couple of times they slow down on the bite where shellcrackers you can spook them a handful of times and they'll keep coming back and they'll keep biting so I'm gonna leave this bed alone for a minute I've hung half a dozen fish out of here most of them got off but I'm going to leave this bed alone. I may come back to it later if I can't find another one. But I'm going to keep going down the bank and trying to find another one. Alright guys, I found a spot. It's just loaded with fish. You see the beds right there? The fish scattered as soon as I got right here. But that is a nasty bed. That's just through my polarized lenses. This is why you bring polarized lenses. And these are the yellow ones. These are the ones I use more times than not. You can see what that polarized lens does for you on the water. Now, I also carry a pair of amber colored polarized lenses and these work as well. You can see that's what it looks like through amber, but you never know which one is gonna work better. So I always just bring both. So you'll see me with two pair of glasses out here often and that's really the reason is because water clarity sometimes will change. In clear water like this, either one of them is going to work pretty good. But you can see the beds. Now I'm close enough you can see it without the polarized lenses. So I got the boat this close, which I'm, I'm still, you know, 15, 20 feet away. But that must be bluegill because they just scattered. Now there will be shellcrackers in there and most likely... For whatever the reason, I'm not sure why, the shellcrackers always take the beds as close to the bank. And then the bluegill take these deeper ones out here. Alright, so I'm scouting for another bed and there's algae growing all the way around this cove. Put my hands in the way. Until you get right there. And the water looks a little cloudy from here. I'm assuming this is brim beds. Ooh, it is too, and there's a million of them. Here, let me see if I can't help you out. See them? This is all bluegill. 
and the water is cloudy where they are freshly kicking it out. So there looks to be a couple of shell crackers over there and a whole lot of bluegill. This is mostly bluegill, but you can see they're just now kicking those beds out. That's why the water looks so cloudy where the rest of this looks crystal clear. That looks cloudy up in there because they're kicking it out. Like they're not kicking them out over here, which tells me probably this side is more shell crackers. So I may focus my attention on this side because shell crackers tend to be a little less spooky. Okay guys, see those shell crackers right there? That's the ones I'm gonna focus on because they seem to be a little less spooky. The bluegill keep running off and they're hard to record for the video. But if you were just fishing, you could back off of that hole right there and catch all the bluegill you want. But for the sake of recording, so you guys can get some underwater footage, shell crackers are far less spooky. And there's two big ones right here. There's three big ones right there. Four. Like here, let me let you... Oh, well, I moved too much. Let me see if I can let you see with my polarized lenses. See them swimming right there? And... Guys, the boat is like right here. I mean, they are literally like four feet from me. So they are a lot less spooky. This guy quick. It's a pretty big fish too. I mean that is a nice shell cracker. Cool. That's two. It only took me a couple of casts to pull two out. Not bad. Third one that quick. Ooh man, this one's a this one's a fighter. Oh, I got him in the grass now. It's a big dude. Look at this shell cracker. That's a big shell cracker. <laughs> Is that not awesome? My freezer's full, I'd be keeping these guys. I think we can pull out one of those bluegill. Oops, I think he's got it already. Can't see my flashlight. Yeah, he's got it. See, this is what I'm talking about. The bluegill are on the other side. If I can't get close enough, I gotta throw at them from a distance. But you can still get them just the same.
finally got that fourth chill cracker out of there. I had to give him a minute to get back in there. And then I got him. <laughs> and he fell in the floor. Guys, I can do this all day long. I can probably catch a hundred of these for well. I say I can catch a hundred of them, but I'd run out of worms first because I don't have a hundred worms. But every now and then you catch one, you get your worm back. Ooh, there's more shell crackers on that side of that log. I'm just going to move the camera over there. <laughs> I mean guys this is just too easy I mean when they're spawning you can just catch them until you just can't catch them anymore and these long shank hooks help get them off easier sometimes they still swallow them pretty good but most of the time you can get them off pretty easy alright guys I'm fixing to wrap it up the sun's getting out it's getting warm I'm going to get to the house take care of some chores I hope you enjoyed it I'll catch you next time.